agreement with uh, uh, Great Britain, France, Germany, and Denmark. Diana, Radio Liberty. And I've been told by a very... Now you can see why we have a great team and how we got this done in the Senate. We're going to take a few quick questions uh, from the local press. Thank you. First question is from Espresso, Italia. Thank you so much. Thank you for visiting. So um, Ukraine has signed the security agreement with uh, Great Britain, France, Germany, and Denmark. Thank you so much. Uh, and the Ukrainians are waiting um, to the official security guarantees uh, with the USA, one of the most important ally of Ukraine. Why is President Biden uh, not ready uh, to provide security guarantees for now? When it will happen? Well, speaking for ourselves, we want to do everything we can to strengthen the alliance between the United States and Ukraine, and uh, this is something that we will look at very, very seriously. Next question is from Mariana, Radio Liberty. And I've been told by a very astute worker that it's your birthday today, so congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. If we, if we were in the United States, we would sing to you. <laughs> in Ukrainian. But we will spare you then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my question is, uh, what is the chance of allocating aid to Ukraine when Congress returns from vacation? And uh, do you have plan B if the House of Representatives will not approve a new package of aid to Ukraine? Look, we are going to fight so hard for this, and make no mistake about it. There are a good number of very powerful House members who are for the supplemental, Republican House members. And so, and if Speaker Johnson were simply to put it on the floor, it would pass with a large majority, in my opinion. And so we are going to pursue this. We think we have a very good chance of getting this done. As I said, Speaker Johnson, if he were to hear what we heard, it's hard to believe anyone could turn down that aid to Ukraine. No obeisance to uh, Donald Trump or anybody else. He should do the right thing, and we're, we're very hopeful and um, stalwart on getting him to see the right thing. Thank you. And the last and final question is Andri from Channel 24. Andri? Thank you. It's not your birthday, is it, Andri? Yeah, it's a bit of it. Okay. <laughs> Ambassador Brink and dear Senators, thank you so much for your support and uh, for your inspiring speeches today. Uh, I would like to add to uh, the Senator Schumer that my mother's family also comes from Turkey neighborhoods so we uh, district, so we're basically from the same neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, but my question is about the efficiency of sanctions. Uh, as uh, Senator Blumenthal uh, told us, uh, today President Biden has announced uh, new, almost like more than 500 new sanctions against yes. Russia. But still we can see that Russia is still able to prolong the war, to continue the war, to build new missiles and drones. And we can see that Western components are part of these drones and missiles, and including semiconductors and microchips from the United States. So are those new sanctions better, stronger, more crucial to Russia? What is the difference? And when we can see the tangible results of the sanctions regime? Okay. So let me first say that nothing will do more for Ukraine than passing the supplemental. So we don't want anybody on the other side to say, well, let's do sanctions instead of the supplemental. We have to do the supplemental and then do sanctions. These sanctions are a good step. We should continue to look at every sanction we can to make sure that Russia pays a price economically and in every other way for its horrible actions here in Ukraine and in many other places around the globe. And we will pursue sanctions in every way we can. Senator Blumenthal is having a hearing in the subcommittee that he chairs called PSI on uh, uh, Tuesday, and uh, I'll call on him to say the last word on sanctions. Uh, I just want to second what Senator Schumer just said about the importance of the supplemental. And I want to say about Senator Schumer that he has led this fight with the kind of passion that you've seen today, both publicly and behind the scenes. So when you ask what are the chances with Senator Schumer fighting, I think the chances are very, very good. I have a great team.
but on, this, on the sanctions, we're going to name and shame. We're going to recommend for criminal prosecution. We're going to hold accountable the American companies that have increased sales by thousands of percent of certain products that contain those chips and semiconductors that are then used for making weapons in Iran, in Russia, and elsewhere. And you're absolutely right to raise this question about the new sanctions. Will they be stringently enforced? Because I know I'm a former prosecutor. You're going to have the best law on the books, but it's dead letter if it's not enforced. And I can commit that we are going to open the books. We are going to do everything we can in the United States Congress to expose the flow of these parts and components, as well as the sales of oil, the kinds of support that the sales of all oil receive, made purposely from American companies, insurance companies, and others, because we need to, in effect, strangle the financial resources that are used by Putin to support this war. Everybody thought his economy would be on its back. Hasn't become that kind of economic failure. And in part, it's the result of the failure to enforce those sanctions as toughly as they should be. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Well, speaking for ourselves, we want to do everything we can to strengthen. The meet in the House of Representatives, who will not ready uh, to provide security guns from now when it will happen. We're going to take a few quick questions uh, from the local press. Thank you. First question. If we were in the United States, we would sing to you. In Ukrainian. But we will spare you then. Yeah. <laughs>